Hi, today I'm going to be talking about dot point two point three of the HSC Biology syllabus. Compare the structure of arteries, capillaries, and veins in relation to their function. So what this ba what this basically is asking us is to compare the structure, so how it looks like, and like you know what layers it has and what features it has, with their function. So in relation to their function, now we need to compare the structure of arteries, capillaries, and veins. What do these three things have in common? Well, they're all blood vessels. That's something you need to know. That these three things that we're going to be comparing, they're all blood vessels, and they all have blood in them. Okay, so let's just go to simple definitions, and just something which can help you remember what's actually happening. So arteries, they're, they're a blood vessel, and they move blood away from the heart. So as, as you can see, I've highlighted A, and I've highlighted the other A here, over here and here. So as you can see, they move blood away from the heart. Then you have veins. Veins move blood back to the heart. Now, I don't have anything like this, but it's just something they should know that veins move it back to the heart. And then capillaries, they're basically tiny, thin-walled blood vessels found in the tissues of the body that carry blood very close to the cells, l linking the arteries and veins. So if you have a little image in your head, there's like arteries on one side, there's veins on the other, and there's capillaries in the middle linking it all together. Okay, now let's go on to the actual structures. Okay, so this is a, a modern diagram of all three things. So we've got the vein here, we've got the artery here, and we've got the capillary here. So I'm going to start annotating this, and I'm going to tell you what structures are, and what structures are present, and what are the re relation to the functions. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to use the color yellow. Okay, anyways. Now, firstly, as you can tell, um, the main thing, the main difference, if you just quickly look at this, the main difference you'll see is that this, this tunica media over here is also called smooth muscle fiber, but this tunica, tunica media is much larger than the vein. So the arteries has a much larger tunica media. Now, if you guys think about it, why, why do you think they have a much larger tunica media? Well, okay, let's have a look. So I'm just going to write it out. Why? Well, okay. Arteries, they're receiving blood from the heart at immense pressures. Because the blood is going to keep on continuing to pump out blood. And per second, it's going to have a higher blood volume and higher pressure. So it's just going to be pumping and pumping and pumping. So in order to actually uh, withstand that pressure, pressure in, in, in order to actually um, survive the pressure of the heart, uh, the blood which is flowing from the heart, the the arteries actually need a thick, smooth muscle fiber. So the 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 thick tunica media, which is the more developed muscles, as you can see in the in the veins, there's hardly any tunica media. It's just a little small layer. But in the arteries, it's massive. And the main reason is to allow for the withstanding of pressure. So. of pressure from the heart or from the blood pumped out of the heart now there's something small that you might also notice and um, yeah, if you just had a look at this diagram you might have just seen oh yeah what does this have and that one doesn't well that's a good question actually because there's two things that this one does have and this one doesn't and that's the internal elastic lamina and the external elastic lamina now the these things it's pretty interesting actually this um, elastic lamina actually allows for the increase and decrease in the lumen's diameter. Now, you'd ask why. So, what's the actual function? What, what's it related to? What, why does it even have this? So, okay, suppose you wanted to increase blood flow. You'd make the lumen larger, right? So, this, just just uh, putting everything aside, this, this middle bit here is a lumen, and it's basically this big right now. But um, the elastic media the elastic external and internal, so one here and one here, alongside with the tunica media, they both have the role of making the diameter of this lumen larger or smaller depending on its needs. So, um, function-wise, right, we can just say 
that um uh, controls diameter of lumen. And as I've already explained, I don't know much space around it, but as I've explained, that's mainly to control the amount of blood flow and to make make sure that it can withstand the amount of blood volume. So it, it can make the lumen la larger in diameter, or it can it can increase the diameter, or it can decrease it. If it's increased, um, then you have this you know increased blood flow, and if it's decreased, then that's constriction, so vasoconstriction, and you've got a decrease of blood flowing through. So that is the two things that I would recommend you guys to remember. Um, that's the two main things, actually. Now we'll move on to the veins, and as you can see, the veins are you know the, there's quite a lot of differences you can already tell from the beginning, which are the valves and you know the the thinner tunica media and all that. But um, let's just have a look. Now comparing this instantly, what can you see? Well, when I first looked at it, I saw that the, the actual lumen this bit, the entire lumen is actually bigger as you can see here. There's there's a massive lumen. Compared to this, the lumen for, for the veins are massive. So um th they actually also have walls which are really thin and the main reason for that is because it's not actually receiving a high blood pressure or high a high amount of blood and um whenever it does receive blood it's not in high pressure so that's that's the main reason why it has thin walls so something you can remember is that it has thin walls okay uh... moving on we've got there is actually um, no need for any stretch and recoil because they've got us uh, and and therefore the smooth muscle layer is much thinner so there is actually no need for any elasticity such as the um, arteries have and you can obviously see this by this this smooth muscle just being thinner whereas this one being massively thick like shown here but um okay let's move on it has a wider lumen and that's mainly because it needs to um, allow for uh, a good easy blood flow and, well, obviously, let's just think of this. If the blood is going back to the heart from the um, from the veins, if it had a small lumen, it would be kind of difficult. I'm pretty sure also gravity would be pushing the blood down, and it would be, it would be really bad. You would need to be able to get the blood back to the heart. So it needs a pretty big lumen, and that's mainly because so it can fit more blood. Okay, now moving on. There's actually two things that can um, help the veins to prevent backflow and when I say backflow I mean it and I define it as the the flow of blood backwards and not towards the heart so as you can see the first thing we have is that um, well you can't see this but the first thing we do have is that veins are actually located in between large groups of muscle and that's like you know in the arms or in the legs where especially force of gravity is pulling the blood down already so if, if the veins are um, located in these areas so when the, when the muscles actually contract the blood gets pushed up so that's one way and the second way is that the veins, they have these valves here. These valves, as you can see here, these two over here. Now these valves, what they do is, basically, I'm not going to go into detail because it's simple. All they do is prevent backflow of blood. Uh, and and as I said, backflow of blood is um, getting, uh, well, preventing blood from flowing backwards, as the name says. So um, that's, a, that's a couple of things that I could probably tell you about the veins and arteries off the top of my head. But um, other than that, I'd recommend you just research into HSC online, and I'll put the links into my description. But um, that's, that completes the veins and arteries for this dot point, really. And now we we'll just have to move on to capillaries. So capillaries, there's not much you can say about the um, actual structure, except all you can say is that capillaries contain thin walls and a small lumen to maximize exchange of substances between the blood and the cells of the body. So, as we can see here, this is going to be situated uh, under cells. Um, so I'm just going to draw little diagrams, you know, the like cells, all these cells here, underneath the capillaries. And now these capillaries, they, they give out these nutrients to these cells. Because remember, we're not an open, we're not an open um, system. We're not, we don't have blood bathing around our 
body parts or organs, we're a closed system. So that means that um, the nutrients from the capillaries have to get transferred from the cell either through diffusion or whatever, and um, they get tra all the waste gets transferred back into the capillaries, back into the blood, and whatnot. So um, the the main structure to function, the relation between structure and function, is that they have a thin wall and contain a small lumen to maximize exchange of substances between the blood and cells of the body. So that is all you need to know, and I really do hope that this entire lesson does help you. I'll be posting the links to HC online and just the simple stuff you need to know. And until next time, bye.